is passive voice bad? The answer is sometimes. In this video, we're going to take a look at what active voice and passive voice even are. I'm going to give you a really quick and easy to follow flow chart to help you change between active and passive voice. And we're going to practice this with a few examples. And then we're going to take a look at some situations in which use of the passive voice can actually be a really big problem. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a much better understanding of when and why to use passive voice. And you'll know the answer to the title of this video too. Is passive voice bad? Let's get into it. First, let's quickly review what active voice and passive voice are. So active voice is a sentence in which the subject or the thing that is doing the action is the focus of the sentence. Let's say we have a really super basic example sentence like the cat took the fish. So there are three components in this sentence. We have the cat right here, which is our subject. So the subject of the sentence in an active voice sentence is the thing that is doing the action, the actor or the agent. After that, we have the verb took in this case. So we have our verb is next. Okay, so that is the action that is happening, the action that the agent or the subject is doing. And finally, we have the fish in this sentence, which is our object. So the object is the thing that receives the verb. In this case, the verb is took. So we have three very basic components in this very basic English sentence. We have our subject and our verb and our object. So in this sentence, the focus is on the cat, right? The thing that is doing the action, right? So how do we change this to a passive voice sentence? So let's break this down really, really easily step by step. And you'll see how all of these parts come together. So in an active voice sentence, the cat or the subject, the one that is doing the action is the focus. However, in a passive voice sentence, the object, the thing that is receiving the action is the focus. So in this case, the fish. So the first step in a passive voice construction is to move the object of our active structure sentence into our passive structure sentence subject position. So that means the fish goes right here at the beginning. Okay. Next, we need a verb. So we're going to use the same verb. Yes, but we need to make a change to this verb. When we make a passive sentence structure, we need to change the verb that was in the original active sentence structure. So we use the same verb, but we need to apply the verb to be to it. And we also need to make sure that we use the same tense that was in the original sentence. So in this case, we have past tense here. And so we need to use was for our be verb. And then we follow with the past participle form as well. So that means was taken is the correct form here. So we have the fish was taken. And finally, because we know the subject in this case, we apply this over here. So who did it? The cat. So the fish was taken and we use by the cat. This shows who did it. So. These are the basic steps that we take to make a simple active sentence into a very simple passive sentence. So again, we still have our same subject and our same object, but they've changed positions in the sentence. And by doing so, the emphasis also changes. So the sentences communicate the same idea, but they've just changed in terms of emphasis. Instead of emphasizing the cat, now we are emphasizing the fish, right? So we have our subject in our passive sentence, and then we have a be verb. So the be verb is in the same tense as the previous example sentence. So same tense as the active sentence structure. Okay. So this is our second component. And then we have our past participle verb. In this case, we have taken and Finally, if we know the actor, this comes after the verb. So it'll be by someone, someone in this case, by the cat. So we're going to use this same process, the same kind of flow chart to create passive voice sentences from active voice sentences throughout this lesson. So let's take a look at how we use this simple flow chart to create other passive voice sentences and break down when we might use them. So let's apply what we learned to create another passive voice sentence from an active voice sentence, but let's level it up a little bit. So my roommate has eaten my snacks. Hate it when that happens. Okay. So my roommate has eaten my snacks. We're going to follow exactly the same pattern that we did a few minutes ago with the first one. Yeah. So we have our subject here, my roommate, right? So here's the first part, my roommate. Here's my verb has eaten. In this case, we have has eaten. So we know that this is a present 
perfect structure. We have to keep this in mind because we have to change this verb later, right? And finally, we have our object, my snacks. Okay, so again, we have the same three parts to our sentence. So the first step here is to move the object into the subject position. So my snacks. Next, we need to change this verb. So we know that this is present perfect tense, right? Has eaten. However, we also need to consider that now our subject is plural, right? My snacks, right? So we can't say my snacks has, right? We need to say my snacks have, okay? So that keeps our perfect tense structure, right? And then we need to use the be verb. So that means have been, right? And our past participle eaten. Okay, I could end this sentence here and it would be fine. My snacks have been eaten. Why would I do that? So if I don't know that my roommate is the person that ate my snacks, this sentence would be fine. I just want to comment, my snacks have been eaten. I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> this sentence would be fine. If I know that my roommate ate the snacks, I could add my snacks have been eaten by my roommate. If I wanted to do that, that would mean the focus is on my snacks. So let's say that I have these two sentences to compare. Why would I choose the active voice over the passive voice here? So my snacks are the focus of the passive voice sentence. My roommate is the focus of the active voice sentence. If for some reason I really want to emphasize my snacks in the situation, I use this one. My snacks have been eaten. I'm really upset about that. However, I think most people probably are more concerned with the responsibility in the situation, right? More people are thinking about who is responsible for this? Who should I talk to about this problem? In this situation, the active voice is going to sound better. Yeah, because we're saying my roommate is the person who's responsible for this. So the active voice tends to sound better in situations like these. So for kind of the final sort of grammar refresher section, let's take a look at a more advanced sentence structure. Let's take a look at something that's maybe a little different than you might see in a textbook. Let's say the sentence is something like this. He doesn't have to write an apology letter. So what do we do with a sentence structure like this to make this passive, okay? So we can still follow the same parts. We identify our subject, so he, and then we have doesn't have to, right? So we can kind of consider this as our verb unit here. And then we have our object, an apology letter. So what does this look like in a passive sentence structure? So if we want to make this sentence passive, it's going to look like an apology letter, right? So we're moving this old object into the subject position. So an apology letter. And then we have doesn't have to write. So right here is the verb write. This is the one that we need to worry about. We don't have to worry about changing this bit. So an apology letter doesn't have to. And then our B verb, be written, yeah. So we don't need to change this to any other tense because we have this to write here. Yeah, this is just a basic present tense verb. So an apology letter doesn't have to be written. And then we could say, if we want to, by him, if we need to include the person that's taking care of the action for some reason. So when would we choose this? So if you want to be really clear about a specific person who doesn't need to take care of this apology letter, you could use the active voice sentence. But if for some reason you need to make clear that like no one in this person's department, this guy doesn't have to do it, his boss doesn't have to do it, his team, his coworker, whatever. If you wanna kind of leave it a little bit more open-ended, you might opt for a sentence like this one. So the these kinds of sentence structures can cause some confusion if it's not really, really clear from the context what the situation is. Okay, great. So we've taken a look at how we change between active and passive voice, and we've looked at a couple of really short and quick examples of why we might choose to use active voice or passive voice. So as I've mentioned, active voice tends to sound much more direct. It sounds very clear. We have a very, very good understanding of the person or the thing doing the action, the verb, and the thing that is receiving the action. So we do this when we want to make responsibility for something very, very clear. So passive voice isn't bad. You just need to know when and where to use it. Passive voice does have some very useful and important functions. The first one is probably the most important one, and it's just that you use it when you don't know the person who did something in a situation. The classic example of this is when someone steals your bag. When you say, someone stole my bag, you're emphasizing someone in that situation. 
However, if you say, my bag was stolen, you are emphasizing your bag, which is what you're really worried about, right? So this is a classic example of passive voice and a very appropriate use of passive voice. We also see another use of passive voice that's very, very common in like politics, maybe in company speeches, perhaps in day-to-day -day life if you work with a lot of sneaky people. This is the use of passive voice to evade responsibility or to try to hide information in some way. So here's a really really, really, really common example of something that you see in the news, especially from companies, corporations, these kinds of things. Mistakes were made. So the problem with this is not grammar. The grammar is totally perfect, but we don't know who made the mistakes. This is done on purpose. The person who is saying this or the person who is writing this has chosen to use passive voice in order to evade responsibility or to try to hide something. So another very common use of passive voice is unfortunately in situations relating to criminal activity and to violence. So one that you might see in the news, unfortunately, from time to time is a sentence like a man was shot or the man was shot. So in this sentence, we don't have information about who shot the man. So in situations where, for example, police brutality is involved, there might be specific language like this used to remove police responsibility or to distance the police from the situation. So when we use passive voice sentences like this, we're not explicitly saying the police shot the man. They're specifically not including that word to try to remove that kind of responsibility or to at least create a little bit of a gap. So this is something that you can pay attention to in the news. When you start noticing these sorts of passive voice structures, you can say, hey, wait, did someone do that on purpose in order to try to evade responsibility? Sometimes the answer is yes. Especially in situations relating to violence and criminal activity and these kinds of really aggressive situations, it can be really, really smart to take a look at the sentence structures and think about what information isn't being shared. The third use of passive voice is simply to shift the emphasis in the sentence. Sometimes the subject of the sentence really isn't that important, and instead we want to focus on something else, like an outcome. So for example, you might see the following type of sentence in like a company email or a corporate email or something like that. It was decided that the project will not be going forward. So this kind of sentence, it was decided that the project will not be going forward, or it was determined that the project will not go forward, something like that. That's a very common type of passive voice sentence that doesn't indicate who specifically decided this thing, but the outcome is more important. Another example of this type of sentence that you might see is something with the pattern, it was determined, as in, it was determined that he is the best candidate for the job. So in a sentence like that, the people who are making the decision are not so important. The outcome of the situation is more important. So that's why they use sentence patterns like it was determined or it was decided and so on. The outcome of that determination or the outcome of that discussion or decision making process is what they want to focus on. You might have read some guides and watched some videos on the internet, maybe even heard from your teachers about how you should try to avoid use of passive voice. And it's true that passive voice is often very inefficient. It's very indirect. It's sometimes very unclear. And these are the reasons that we tend not to use passive voice as much as active voice, especially in our writing, because we have less of an opportunity to clarify any questions that we have. It's much easier to do that face to face when we can ask follow up questions. We can't do that in our writing. So this is one of the reasons that we tend to say, try to avoid too much passive use in your writing. Of course, if you have situations where it's important to use passive voice or when you have no other choice, then sure, go for it. That's fine to do. Just keep in mind that when you're writing, your primary goal is to communicate something to your reader. So you need to make sure that your reader is able to understand the ideas that you are trying to get across. So think about whether passive voice is the most appropriate way to do that, or if you could better be served with an active voice sentence. Awesome, now you know the differences between active voice and passive voice and you have a ton of tools to help you in making good decisions in your writing in the future. I hope that you enjoyed this video. This video was created with a lot of planning and research by me. <laughs> Bye. Should I avoid passive voice in my writing? Is passive voice the worst thing ever? <laughs> Sometimes.